afternoon. Today is the 8th of June and it's time for yet another not particularly interesting, very vague and probably quite boring vlog. So we're in the Sanyon today. We don't actually often feature this car on the channel, principally because there's an, not a lot to say about it on a day-to-day -day basis. My lady wife takes this car to work um, we do some long trips in it, and that's really about it. There's only ever been one major problem with this car, and that is the clutch slow cylinder, which failed at around 14,000 miles when the car was 18 months old or something like that. Apart from that, there's not really an awful lot to say. But more important than that, there will be an ownership report on this car coming up at some point uh, during July. Sanyong itself has been through quite a lot of um, hmm, say difficulty over the last few years. And this is really an update on many videos that I've done over the course of a really long time to say that the Sanyong Tivoli and this is a Sanyong Tivoli that I'm driving, is now officially the KG Ability Tivoli. Which, to me, I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm not necessarily sure that changing the name of the company to KG Mobility, obviously in line with the fact that Sanyong is now owned by a Korean firm called the KG Group, is the best idea. So, Mahindra and Mahindra owned Sanyong for quite a while. I think it was 2010 to 2020, and they were trying to kind of get rid of, of, the, of the company in 2020. I think eventually they entered a thing called court receivership in early 2021. And they were in court receivership for quite a long time. And there were various plans put forward as to what to do. A company called Edison Motor, who are also, I think, a Korean firm, were going to take on the debt, restructure the company, get them out of court receivership. But they missed the deadline for the initial payment for the company that the court had said they had to actually uh, implement. Um, and they didn't take it, whereas KG Group, I think in October 2022, actually did did buy the company and it, it, it's gone through. Now, I did speak to the Sanyong um, press office about this at the time when the deal was going through. And uh, they hadn't decided at the time whether they're gonna rebrand the car in this country or not. A firm called Bastard Automotive actually runs the UK arm of Sanyong. They're based in Gibraltar as far as I know. Um, so they they aren't necessarily kind of that fussed about certain things like other companies would be. But I don't know what's sort of going to happen. The thing is, is that Sanyong's not had the best reputation in this country for quite a long time now. A lot of the people said the car's not they make and not very good looking, which I think, considering the current rage, I don't think that's really true, but everyone has their own opinion about that. Historically, I, I think possibly some of the ones they made weren't the best. I mean, the Radius is the most important example in that, that way. And, you know, they're not very reliable and they just don't have very, very good residuals and all this kind of stuff. But other words have improved a bit for Sanyong, and we don't really sell an awful lot in this country. Um, sometimes the parts can be a little bit expensive and difficult to find, and I found that when actually having to put some tyres on this, which are much more expensive than it would have been, because it's a rare size. And also, um, the brake pads weren't too bad, uh, and, I'm, and I had to put, a, a, I think, a, a track control arm on this, actually, as well. It's another thing that's sort of happened, that just maybe just wear and tear, and set of our roads really but you know overall the experience of owning this car has been quite good and uh, you know very few people even know that this car exists if you do rebrand it to something else then they're gonna perhaps could be a bit mystified as to why you've taken one name that's not very well known and actually replaced it with another that's totally unknown to virtually everybody in this country and there are some connotations I think with with that name as well I think some of you can probably work out what they are already 
um, which makes me a little bit hesitant about, you know, being associated with the company with, you know, a, a name like this. But what we'll do now is we'll uh, get some petrol because it's running a bit low, and uh, then we'll then we'll continue. I think. So, viewers, we now have some petrol. Let's uh, think more about this um, KG Mobility Tivoli. What? do we know about it so far? Well, there's an article from the Auto Express website that I'll be linking to in the video description below if you want more specific information, but speaking to someone who owns a Tivoli and has actually driven a facelifted one, I'll put the link to that review um, in the video description below as well, I have a 2020 model. It's not that different from the 2020 model, and some of the speculation in the Auto Express article I think it's a little bit on the daft side. It, it says that for some reason this old 1.6 engine that's in this car, which hasn't been in the Tivoli's for three years, will be back in the new one. Uh, I don't really think that's going to happen. Also, that the ones that will be made under the KG Mobility name and sold here will be available with four-wheel drive. Well, four-wheel drive hasn't been available in this country since the, they dropped, um, you know, the Tivoli XLV and also they facelifted the car again in 2020. And it says that the cars could possibly only be available with an automatic after this thing comes in. So I'm not really sure I, I sort of think that that's the case. I think that the final spec uh, specification for our market is yet to be decided, just as it's yet to be decided whether the car actually uses um, the Sanyong or KG Mobility name um, as a branding over here. If you look at the Sanyong website as of the day of recording, which is June 2023, uh, there's no sign of any KG Mobility anywhere on there, even though you know they've, they've known about this for some time. And you know, they've made statements about the fact that it's a really great thing. Well, it is a great thing in many ways because the future of the company now looks quite secure and they've got electric cars coming out. There's a brand new Torres model which is based on the Corando, which is supposed to be an electric car only in this country. So, that point of view, it, things are looking up for Sanyong or KG Mobility. But uh, I think. What the future of, of the Tivoli is in particular, because this car has been out since 2015. It's it's, a, it's an older model now, um, and uh, you know that's not necessarily the end of the world. Particularly the MG3, which <laughs> came out in 2013, is still being sold and actually is still doing quite well. And the, the price has risen for the Tivoli since they were they were launched. Um, the base model is now about twenty thousand pounds. It used to be. 12 and a half when it was launched in 2015, which is amazing. You do get more equipment these days, of course, like, and the price of second-hand cars and the price of new cars has massively risen, so it's not a big surprise, but the people who used to buy these, um, I don't know if it's the same sort of profile of person at all anyway. So maybe a change, a change of company name won't make any difference to anyone, but I don't really know. Um, I'd be interested to hear what you think about all this. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment below, and uh, we shall see you again soon for more incorrect and rambling information.